She's a countryside. She's a countryside man. You know, and she, as far as I know, she will be staying Did there. she break her hip? Does she what? Did she break her hip? Or did she it? cracked it. Okay. She you had know, a which takes time. longer to heal than if she'd actually broken yeah. it. And they have moved her to Mount Vernon. Um, she's going to probably be staying at Countryside Manor because uh, her daughter Sharon is close there also. So uh, that's the status with, with Barbara. Good morning. That works, doesn't it? <laughs> it's good to have a sound system. I remember when we all first came here that we were sometimes questioning. We don't have to worry about it now. It works well. And I absolutely love the pyramids on the altar. I walked in this morning and I said, Hallelujah, we're right back in church. They just fit. So, good morning. Our call to worship this morning, all who are tired, hurt, grieving, or outcast are invited to come to Jesus. For God calls us all to gather in the name of Jesus. So let us worship God today. Will you pray with me, please? Oh God, you have created us as your people and called us to partner with you in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. He is the one who knows us and how we live in relationship with you and with one another. May your Holy Spirit, O oh God, fill us with passion and enthusiasm for the sake of the gospel. We pray today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. And just as a small aside, the Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels. So often we will be hearing the Gospel of John in addition to the Gospel of Mark. In chapter 1, beginning at verse 21 and 22, Jesus and his followers went into Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and started teaching. And the people were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching them as one with authority, not like the legal experts. And then to verse 29, after leaving the synagogue, Jesus, James, and John went with Simon and Andrew to Simon's home. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed, sick with fever. And they told Jesus about her at once. He went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served them. That evening at sunset, people brought to Jesus those who were sick or demon-possessed. The whole town gathered near the door, he healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases, and he threw out many demons. 
but he didn't let the demons speak because they recognized him. Early in the morning, well before sunrise, Jesus rose and went to a deserted place where he could, he could be alone in prayer. Simon and those with him tracked him down. When they found him, they told him, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let's head in the other direction, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there too. That is why I've come. He traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and throwing out demons. And here ends this reading. A God bless our reading, our hearing, and our understanding of these words. It's good to hear music. <laughs> and I love to fill my cup, Lord. That sounds such a beautiful message to it. There's a father who one day had some errands to run, and he wanted to at the same time to do some quiet time, some quality time, he called it, with his six-year-old son. So he decided, well, he'd take the boy with him while he was running errands they were going to take most of the day, and they could spend some time visiting and doing some other things as well, maybe. 
When it came lunchtime, they went to a diner that they knew. They were going to get a sandwich and then could continue on with the day. When they got the food, the father looked at the son and he said, son, he said, let's just pray quietly, silently for our food. Well, the father said a quiet prayer and then he waited for his son to open his eyes as if he were finished. Finally, after what seemed like a very long time, the boy opened his eyes and the father looked at him and he said, son, what were you praying about for so long? And the boy looked at him and he said, dad, how would I know? It was silent. <laughs> that one reaches out and grabs you after a bit. There are multiple stories in the Bible about how God has revealed God's self to people throughout our biblical history. There's a story of Moses and the burning bush. I can't imagine standing by a bush and having it catch fire all of a sudden and yet not be consumed. But the Bible tells us that's what happened. Later on, we're told that Moses went up Mount Sinai. He and God talked. They even had an argument or two. Moses, however, was never able to look upon God's personhood. We have the story of Samuel in the Bible. Now, there was a voice calling Samuel. Samuel one night, and Samuel couldn't figure out what it was. He was young, inexperienced. After waking Eli up a short time, Eli finally figured out what was happening and told Samuel to go back and ask God what God wanted. There's the prophets who periodically would hear God's voice, God's revelation, they eventually came to understand that God was not real happy the way the people, especially the religious people, were treating the poor. Change it, God was telling them. And then there's the story of Mary and Joseph. We all know that story. How God revealed God's self through an angel, through dreams. And then we come to today's story of, in Mark, where Jesus had gone to the synagogue and he had preached as one with authority. Later, when they went to Simon Peter's house, Jesus healed his mother-in-law. A word must have really sped fast in that small community for people to appear at in the evening with all these sick people that needed healed and all the demons that needed cast out. These were obviously some of the first people who would hear Jesus in his new ministry, for his ministry was just a beginning. The next morning, instead of staying in spending more time with the people that had come, Jesus decides he wants to go in the opposite direction, to speak with more people, more people who could also spread the word. And Jesus is at the same time calling disciples. And through these people, all people would come to know God. They would come to know that that experience with Jesus was exactly what God was like. Later in history, a few years after the crucifixion and the resurrection, we have St. Paul talking about 
the experience that he'd had on the Damascus Road with Jesus. And how his experience, he told the Corinthians, and he wrote his letter to them. How he had come to understood Jesus as saying that God desired us to be a servant to all, to everyone. It didn't matter who they were. It didn't matter whether they were a Jew or a Gentile or who they were. We were to be servants to everyone. Jesus is, after all, the personification of God. Jesus, the word that became flesh, as the writer of the Gospel of John tells us. Jesus, who came to teach us about God. Who came to teach us with authority as to who God is, what God wills for us, how we are to act toward one another. Now I know we live in this age when God is seemingly silent, although UCCs have historically said God is still speaking. That's a beautiful phrase. God has never truly been quiet. In a conversation I had with someone who's been a lifelong Christian, we talked about how difficult it is in the era of COVID virus to remember God is still there. God is still talking to us. God is not really quiet. That person went on to say, God is there in the blessings that I receive each and every day. And that's true. All of us are being blessed in some way or other every single day. Much of the time we pay little attention to those blessings. But they're there. I thought later about that conversation and I said, you know, God has always been in my experiences that I've had with others. I have learned much about God in conversations, in my reading of books, in the things I have done. Much of the time I have found when there's something I don't really want to do, that God says, yes, you will. Those have turned out to be some of the best experiences that I've had. I've always been very appreciative of them. When we were at the food pantry yesterday, God was there in that experience that we shared working together as we're serving those who had need. And we don't know how many other people that we served. So many don't come to the food pantry and yet they receive a blessing that comes from us and through us. There was a blessing yesterday and all the extra things that had been brought in. We were swamped for a while putting things away. And yet, what a tremendous blessing those things are to other folk. We also meet God in the prayers that we say. Jesus prayed alone. He always liked to pray alone, except for that one time he taught us the Lord's Prayer. He was blessed and strengthened by God through those prayers. And I dare say sometimes when we come to worship, God has revealed God's self here in worship as well. 
There have been times when I know myself I have walked out highly elated because of something that happened that day. I'll never forget the day I was preaching, I think on a psalm, but I'm not sure what it was. And we had a mentally challenged young woman in the congregation, came every Sunday, just as faithful as you could be. And I don't have a clue anymore what I said, but she got up from her seat, came up and stood beside me and said, Amen! What an experience that was. It was so fitting. And it was something that little expected from all of us. And yet, when we all left, we knew God had been there in that worship service that day. We may not see God, we may not have a personal experience with God, but those little experiences are there each and every day of the week. Now I think it's easier maybe on Sunday to have those experiences. We're reminded that God is there and that's the reason we are in church to worship. But God comes, God reveals God's self to us each and every day of the week. And it's almost always in something that is very, very mundane. We may not even understand it at the time, but it is there. So we have the story of Jesus. Jesus as the gospel writer John wrote, the Word. The Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. God's self is revealed in that Word. And amen. And will you pray with me? Holy God, you have been creating since the beginning of time. You have been giving shape to the world. We thank you for your love and care for this world. And we thank you for ourselves. We thank you for the prophets that you sent to call us to faithfulness. And thank you most of all for Jesus who came that we might know you and all that you are. Today we lift up prayers for your creation that it might be healed. We pray for the oppressed and those who are outcasts or brokenhearted. We pray that they might be made visible, that their wounds might also be healed. We remember those who are ill and those who grieve and ask that you touch them each with your grace, your love, and your compassion. We pray for our own country and the many countries of the world and their many leaders. May they be guided by your will and your Holy Spirit. And we lift up your church and all the faithful of the world. Today, O oh God, we have private concerns silent concerns. We pray for them now. And some of us might even pray the Lord's Prayer just as Jesus taught.
Hear our prayers, O God. Hear our prayers. And today we ask your blessing on the offerings that we bring today. Use them as you have need. Use us as you have need. We pray in the name of the word. Amen. <clears throat> On the first Sunday of the month, we celebrate communion. We gather around the table of the Lord, we say. We ask that we might grow in likeness to Jesus Christ. Jesus, on that night in which he was betrayed, he would sit at a table with his disciples. He would bless a bro loaf of bread, and then he would give it to the disciples, asking them to eat from it, and as they ate, to remember him. He likewise took a cup after the meal, he blessed that cup, filled with just common old ordinary grape juice, perhaps a little wine and water. And then he gave them the cup to drink from. And likewise, he said, as you eat and you drink, remember me, for I give you these elements as a remembrance. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, we ask your blessing on this bread and this cup as we partake of them at a later time. Thank you for inviting us to this table. And thank you for Jesus who gave us the ritual as a means of remembering him. May the bread and the cup help to strengthen our faith as we walk in faith. Amen. As we leave here today, let us go and let us attend to those small revelations that come from God each and every day. Let us be aware of how frequent yet how common they are. Let us go in peace and amen.